Hi guys, in this particular video, we are going to discuss the recent RBA notification pertaining to the electronic trading platforms, which are more precisely known as the electronic trading platforms reserve bank directions of 2018. So this is the notification which we are going to cover in this particular video. So this relates to electronic trade trading platforms and this has been issued under the recent RBA directions of 2018. So these directions, they have been issued in lieu of the bi-monthly monetary policy statement for 2017-18, which was issued in October 2017. And in this particular statement, it was stated that RBA is going to put in a framework for authorization of electronic trading platforms on which the financial market instruments, they can be traded. So this platform was to be introduced by RBI and in this regard, discussions were already in place. So the draft directions, they were already in public domain in October 2017. And based on the feedback which was received, these directions, they have been now finalized and they are known as electronic trading platforms, Reserve Bank Directions 2018. So friends, this is a brief from the statement on development and regulatory policies. So this was a statement issued in October 2018 in which it was mentioned that this trading on electronic platforms, it is being encouraged across the world. So it was not merely an Indian phenomena. It was being encouraged across the world. The reason being that it enhanced the pricing transparency because the prices are going to be determined on this electronic platform and the processing efficiency is going to improve as well as the risks are going to be in control because everything is going to be done through the electronic means in a transparent and efficient manner. Further, this would also enable better market surveillance. So once everything is in a electronic transparent manner, market surveillance would become easy for, for the regulators and therefore the practices which pertaining pertain to abuse of market or unfair trading practices, they are going to be curbed. So in this regard, it was said that RBI is going to put in a framework by which there is going to be authorization of electronic trading platforms for financial market instruments, which are regulated by the Reserve Bank. So this framework was to be put in a place and this would be for the financial market instruments, only those instruments which are under the regulatory purview of RBI. So this framework would contain details with regard to eligibility criteria, technology requirements, reporting standards and all. So based on this, this, this is the gist basically of these particular directions. So this is the background in the light of which these directions they have been issued. So it was first essential to know this particular background so that we are able to understand why this notification or why these directions they were put in place. So first and foremost, we must be aware about certain key definitions. So first, the key definition is electronic trading platform. So what is this electronic trading platform? So this is very simple. So this is going to be any electronic system. And this is very important other than a recognized stock exchange on which transactions in eligible instruments are contracted. So basically this is an electronic system, but this is not a recognized stock exchange because recognized stock exchanges, they are also electronic trading platforms, but they are outside the regulatory ambit of RBI. So they are similar to the stock exchanges and on these platforms, transactions in eligible instruments. So this is also very important. Eligible instruments, not all the instruments, only certain eligible instruments, they are going to be transacted on these particular platforms. So what are the eligible instruments? So this is defined in this next point. So eligible instruments, they are the securities, money market instruments, foreign exchange instruments, derivatives, or other instruments of the like nature, which may be specified by the RBI from time to time. So basically these are those instruments which are under the regulatory ambit of RBI. So for those instruments in order to promote more transparency and liquidity, RBI has come up with this idea of electronic trading platform. So basically market is going to be created for certain securities which were under the ambit of RBI. Now, how can one become an electronic trading platform operator? So you wish to start your own electronic trading platform on which the transactions in these eligible securities would take place. So how would you do so? Now, in any electronic trading platform operator, it will mean an entity which is authorized by the RBI to operate an ETP under these directions. 
so first and foremost the most important thing is authorized by the reserve bank so you must be authorized by the reserve bank then only you can operate an electronic trading platform further no entity shall operate an electronic trading platform without prior authorization of the rbi so again this prior authorization is very important and another very important point is that what about the electronic trading platforms which are already in place so the directions are very clear with regard to these also so they specify that electronic trading platforms which are existing and operating on or before the commencement of these directions they will have to make an application for authorization so they will also have to make an application for authorization and they will not get automatic authorization so application is to be made within a period of six months from the date of issue of these directions further electronic trading platforms authorized by the rba shall host the transactions only in the instruments which are approved by the rba so only certain instruments which are approved by the RBA, they are going to be uh, made available for trading on these particular platforms. So this is about being an ATP operator. Now certain exemption has also been granted from these particular directions. So electronic trading platforms which are operated by banks for their customers on a bilateral basis so they are very narrow in scope very narrow platforms which are simply banking transactions with customers so banks are also kind of providing a small platform on which the customers they can come to the bank and they can trade in these particular securities with the bank so uh, those particular trading platforms they have been exempt from the provisions of these directions provided that these do not extend direct or indirect access to market makers in any market for eligible instruments. So they are just trading with their customers on a one-on-one -on -one basis, on a bilateral basis, and they are not providing any in general market to the market makers for eligible instruments. So that's why they have been kept outside the ambit of these particular directions. Now these directions they have a very detailed criteria with regard to authorization of electronic trading platforms. So these this criteria has been divided into three points. One is the general criteria, second is the financial criteria, and the third one is the technological criteria. So let's take a quick look at all the points which are associated with these criteria. So first let's learn about general criteria. So general criteria says the entity shall be a company incorporated in india so if you have to start an etp you must be a company which is incorporated in india the existing entities which are operating electronic trading platforms without being incorporated in india so they also would have to comply with this particular requirement and again a time period has been given in this regard so they will have to confirm with the requirement of incorporation in india within a period of one year from the date of issue of authorization of the ETP by the RBA under these directions. So they also would have to get themselves incorporated in India. Further, the entity seeking authorization as an ETP operator or its key managerial person, they should have experience. So this experience is also required with regard to at least three years in operating trading infrastructure in financial markets so three year experience with regard to providing such kind of a platform trading platform in financial markets is also required so this is the general criteria now let's talk about the financial criteria now an entity which is seeking authorization as an etp operator has to maintain certain net worth so it must be a big entity it must be a rich entity if it is operating as an electronic trading platform because let's face it huge amounts of money crores and crores of money they are going to be transacted on this particular platform so the platform owner should have a very good net worth very good uh, very good credit worthiness or very good uh, capacity as on a financial basis so that's why an entity which is seeking authorization as an ETP operator under these directions it shall maintain a net worth of rupees 5 crore and it shall continue to maintain this minimum net worth prescribed herein at all times. So this net worth is not just required at the time of authorization but also it is required at all the times. Further, the existing entities which are operating electronic trading platforms with a net worth with lower than the prescribed net worth they will again be required to achieve this minimum net worth and here in this case also certain time period of relaxation has been given so they would have to comply with this one within one year from the date of authorization by the rbi 
Further, the banks which are seeking authorization to operate such kind of a platform, they will have to earmark a minimum capital of rupees 5 crore for this particular purpose. So banks would be having lots of capital with them running into crores, but they would have to earmark separate amount of rupees 5 crore for this particular ETP purpose if they are seeking authorization to operate an electronic trading platform under these directions. Now let's also quickly talk about the technological criteria. Now this is very simple. Uh, it is required that they maintain robust technological infrastructure with high degree of reliability, availability, scalability and security. So the crux is that there should be robust technological infrastructure so that a huge amounts of transactions which are going to be there on this particular platform, they remain secure, they remain, uh, they, they remain protected and they remain reliable so that's why this this technological criteria has been specified and the objective is to ensure that there is a capability to disseminate trade related information on a real time basis or near a real time basis so that's why this technological criteria is also very important for becoming an etp now let's talk about the application to operate the this etp platform now entities which are satisfying this eligibility criteria which we have just discussed and they want to become an ATP operator, they can submit an application in the prescribed format and this is to be submitted to the Chief General Manager of the Financial Markets Regulation Department, Reserve Bank of India for grant of authorization to operate an ATP. Then the Reserve Bank may after being satisfied that the applicant fulfills the eligibility criteria it is going to grant the authorization to operate an etp subject to the terms and conditions stipulated therein therein so this application is to be going to be filed to operate etp and rbi is going to satisfy itself and then grant authorization to operate an etp so this authorization granted to an entity to operate an etp ETP is not transferable, it's just restricted to that entity which has been granted this particular authorization. So this is the point here that if you have to become ETP, apply to RBI, once you get the registration, you cannot transfer it to someone else. This registration is going to remain non-transferable. Now what about the operating framework with regard to the transactions which are going to take place on this ETP platform? So in this regard, the directions are very clear. They specify the responsibility of the ETP operator and they talk about this in the access and participation and risk management subheadings. So this operating framework has been divided into two parts. One is the access and participation part and the second one is the risk management part. Now with regard to access and participation, uh, the directions state that there must be a proper objective, fair and transparent membership criteria. So who can be members of this particular trading platform for this particular purpose? There must be a proper criteria in place and the platform operator should undertake due diligence at the time of onboarding of all the members. So it should satisfy itself that they are genuine members which are here in for the trading and it should also identify its members uniquely using the legal entity identifier code or the permanent account number that is PAN number. So this can help in KYC of the members and there must be proper well documented rules and regulations in place with regard to the different aspects of this platform now with regard to risk management th there are again elaborate points and it states that the operator should ensure access control for its members and it should prevent unauthorized access to the platform so unauthorized access has to be prevented and algo facilities they have to be offered in a transparent and non-discriminatory manner now, what are ALGO facilities? We are going to discuss this in the coming slide. Uh, further, there should be rules and regulations in a transparent manner to deal with any kind of exigencies or untoward situations which are not predicted in advance. Then there should be arrangement to address any dispute that may arise or likely to arise between its members. So this is about the operating framework. Now we learned about the ALGO trading in the previous slide. So let's just take a look at the meaning of this particular term. So ALGO trading means algorithm trading and it means the trading which is originating by a software program using automated execution logic. 
So on one side you can see there's a person who is placing orders and he's getting really confused about the things. And on the other side there's a robot who is placing orders very quickly. So uh, everything is programmed in this particular robot and it is specified that if the prices touch this particular range you would have to place an order. So that's why these are very swift and they're done using a software program. Now let's talk about the points with regard to data that is preservation and reporting of the data with regard to activities of the ETP. Now all the data relating to the activities on the platform, it has to be maintained in an easily retrievable media for at least 10 years. So the period is at least 10 years. Further, an ETP is, is going to provide any data or information which is required by the Reserve Bank in the specified format and further it shall also report the transaction information to any other repository or platform if it is specified as by the reserve bank further the etp shall provide data or information to any other agencies or authorities which may be required under the indian laws further an etp shall keep the rbi informed of the events which resulted in disruption of the activities or the market abuse without undue delay so they will have to comply with these particular norms with regard to data preservation and reporting. So these are very stringent norms and on each and every aspect, if there is any issue, Reserve Bank of India has to be kept into the loop. Now, what about the termination of operations? So if you have become an ETP operator, but now you want to terminate your operations, then what you have to do, you have to obtain a prior approval of the Reserve Bank of India in this regard and then only after complying the requisite terms and conditions, then only you can terminate your operations. So friends, now let's try to critically analyze or let's take an expert's view with regard to these particular directions which have been issued. So experts are of the opinion that yes, these kinds of platform make the market more transparent with regard to certain eligible instruments. But then again, they have raised certain very critical issues, which we must be aware about. So until now, except for the RBA run platform for the government securities, all other platforms which are offering trading facilities for securities, they were considered the stock exchanges and they were regulated by SEBI. So I believe even if you were studying these regulations, you would have at some point of time just thought about how the different kinds of instruments they are being regulated by SEBI and now the RBA directions they are in place. So how there is going to be an overlap in this particular regard. So this particular new approach of bifurcating the regulatory powers with regard to the securities market platforms, this is problematic and it would tend to amount to regulatory overreach on the part of RBA. So basically some of the experts, they are trying to say that the power with regard to regulating the securities market it should remain with SEBI and when RBA does something which, which seems like regulating the securities market, then this, this is a regulatory overreach on the part of RBA. Further, an efficient financial regulatory architecture is one that enables the seamless trading in all kinds of securities. So there should be one financial system in which all kinds of securities they can be traded without any hassles. And even the RBA's vision of a differently governed market infrastructure for RBA specified securities, this is a retrograde step. This is not a good step. This would take us backward in India's journey because this, this would take us backward in our journey towards a unified market for organized financial trading. So this is trying to bifurcate the market, one for the SEBI and for the RBA. So this is a retrograde step when you talk about unifying the India's financial trading scenario. So friends, this was all about our discussion on this RBA directions pertaining to electronic trading platforms. Now let's try to understand by this particular topic in a more clear manner by looking at the MCQs based on this particular topic. First question, trading on electronic platforms is being encouraged across the world as it enhances pricing transparency, processing efficiency and risk control. It enables better market surveillance and therefore discourages market abuse and unfair trading practices, both of the above or none of the above. So friends, we have seen that the trading on electronic platforms this is being encouraged for both of these reasons as also mentioned in the bi-monthly monetary policy of RBI. So here the answer is going to be option number C. Next question, which of the following correctly describes the electronic trading platform as per the RBI directions 2018? 
It shall mean any electronic system including a recognized stock exchange on which the transactions in eligibility eligible instruments are contracted. It shall mean any electronic system other than a recognized stock exchange on which transactions in all the securities market instruments they are contracted. Next is it shall mean any electronic system other than the recognized stock exchange on which the transactions in eligible securities are contracted or none of the above. So this is very simple. This is simply asking us about the meaning of the electronic trading platforms and this we have already seen that it is a platform other than recognized stock exchange on which that eligible instruments they are being contracted. Next question, which of the following is are correct with regard to the application for authorization of an, authorization as an electronic trading platform operator as per the RBI directions 2018? No entity shall operate an ETP without obtaining prior authorization of RBI. So this is correct as we have already seen. Existing ETP operators as on the date of directions need not take prior authorization of RBI. So this is incorrect as we have started. So here the answer is going to be option number A. Next question. Which of the following is not one of the criteria for becoming an ETP as per the RBI directions 2018? The entity shall be a company incorporated in India. Entity seeking authorization as an ETP operator shall maintain a minimum net worth of rupees 5 crores. Bank seeking authorization to operate ETP are exempt from the minimum capital requirements. So here the third statement is going to be correct because banks are also required to comply with certain kinds of these requirements. Next question. As per the RBI directions 2018, all data relating to activities on the ETP shall be maintained in an easily retrievable media for how many years? Options are 5, 8, 12 at least years. So here we have seen that all this data is to be maintained in an easily retrievable media for at least 10 years. So the answer is going to be option number C. Next question, as per the RBA directions 2018, an ETP operator who is holding a letter of authorization to commence or carry on ETP operations may terminate its operation. Options are with prior approval of RBI, without prior approval of RBI, either of the above or none of the above. So guys, as we have seen that if you have to terminate your operations as an ETP, then this has to be done with the prior approval of the Reserve Bank. So here the answer is going to be option number A. So guys, these are the answers. So guys, this is all about our, our discussion on the RBI notification pertaining to the electronic trading platforms. Thank you. So friends, if you enjoyed watching this video, please like the same, share it with your friends and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And in case you wish to get regular updates from us, you can even join our Telegram channel, the link of which is given here, as well as in the description of this particular video. Now an additional benefit which you can get by joining this Telegram channel is that you can fetch the PDFs of all the discussions which we are doing on YouTube through this particular Telegram channel, which is going to be very helpful for you in revision. So thank you friends. Happy learning.